Want to know a way to get around time intelligence issues with DAX in Power BI Desktop? That and more is coming up. Hi, I'm Adam Saxon, and today's Thursday, which means we're going to do our information roundup like we do every Thursday here on Guy in a Cube. There were some good updates from the Power BI product team as well as some other community members, so let's go and take a look. First up is an update for Power BI and Power BI Desktop. There were a lot of things in this post, so I'm just going to name a few. First off, from a report view perspective, you can now see folders that are listed in Analysis Services Multidimensional. Those will actually show up in the field pane. KPIs have now GA'd with inside of Power BI Desktop. There's also a new KPI visual that you can check out, as well as updates to the ribbon bar that are contextual to where you're at with inside of your report design. From a data modeling perspective, you can now create custom data hierarchies. I know a lot of people have been asking for that, so that is available in Power BI Desktop now. And from the data connectivity side, there were a lot of updates in terms of what we can connect to. One of those items being a JSON file, as well as some updates for direct query. So go check out this blog post, see what all's come out, make sure you're on the latest version of Power BI Desktop, and have fun with the updates. Next on the list is an update for the Power BI Gateway for Enterprise. And in this release, we're now announcing that you can do live connections using direct query to Oracle and Teradata. The other update is that you can now do schedule refresh. You may have been doing schedule refresh through the personal gateway, but now you can make use of the enterprise gateway for schedule refresh as well. This removes some of the friction that end users could have when trying to do refresh. So from an enterprise perspective, admins can go and set up an enterprise gateway with a specific data source. And when the end user goes to set up schedule refresh, if the enterprise gateway is there and that user is in the allowed list of people that can publish, you'll see some options there that allow you to pick that enterprise gateway. The last thing I'll say about this is just a note about the Analysis Services Connector. If you're still using the Analysis Services Connector, you need to migrate over to the Enterprise Gateway. We are only supporting the Analysis Services Connector until the end of March. So clock is ticking, you don't have much time. Next on the list is a blog post from Jen Underwood regarding data gravity and hybrid BI. This came out of a talk she just gave recently on this topic. And she talks about data gravity and the amount of data that's coming between cloud and on-premises and what you can do with solutions that Microsoft currently offers from a hybrid BI perspective. This includes things like StretchDB, Polybase, along with items such as what reporting services can do with Power BI that's coming with SQL 2016. So be sure to check this out. It's a great overlook of what Microsoft is offering. Of note, Jen Underwood is a Microsoft employee, same as myself, so keep that in mind as you're reading it, but there's a lot of great information inside of it. Next on my list is a blog post from Chris Webb from Across the Pond, and he takes a look at Azure Data Catalog. If you haven't seen Azure Data Catalog, you should take a look. It's a great way to kind of put all of the connections from your organization in one spot that's discoverable for other, from other people. It also plays nice with Power BI in terms of bringing those connections in from the Azure Data Log, uh, from the Azure Data Catalog portal. So take a look at this blog post if you want a good kind of intro to what Azure Data Catalog is and how you can make use of it in your organization. Last on my list for today is a blog post from Marco Russo where he takes a look at time intelligence functions in DAX and some of the problems that you could hit in Power BI Desktop mainly because of the fact that mark as date table is not available in Power BI Desktop. You had that ability in Analysis Services as well as Power Pivot in Excel. So he takes a look at how you can kind of overcome that issue and still make use of time intelligence functions. So if you're hitting that wall, be sure to check out this blog post. Do you have any questions about any of the items I talked about? Are you excited about the new items that have come out with Power BI Desktop? Are you gonna switch over to the Enterprise Gateway for schedule refresh? I'd also love to know if you guys are using Azure Data Catalog. Do you find it useful? If this is your first time here, go ahead and subscribe. Every Thursday I do an information roundup just like this where I take a look at the last week, find things that were interesting to me and share that out with you. Every Tuesday I take a look at a technical item where I either look at how to troubleshoot something, how something works, or just look at a new feature. And really this is about you. 
I want to help you be more effective and successful in the things that you do. So go ahead and subscribe and be part of the conversation.